Now to an organisation that will do anything to avoid unwanted exposure. The Exclusive Brethren calls itself a religion. Critics call it Australia's biggest cult and it's getting bigger. Some of its more radical practices are worth exploring. But as reporter Jackie Quist found out, that's not easy. Here's what happened when Jackie investigated how the Brethren treats members who are in any way different. Dare to tangle with the exclusive brethren and look out. It was an ambush. In the black Mazda behind us, two brethren goons, dispatched from a brethren place of worship in Ermington, Sydney, where we were filming the story you're about to see. The story of this man, Craig Hoyle, seventh generation brethren who says he was excommunicated for being gay but only after being temporarily chemically castrated. Do you prescribe this often for homosexuality? No. Why did you prescribe it in this instance? Homosexuality he was is not wanting, a he disease. Was, he was wanting help. He was wanting, he was wanting to go a different way. He told me he, he had, a, had some heterosexual desire, which he wanted strengthened. Thank you. Oh, doctor, I, I can't Look, believe you would say that. I'm so, I'm sorry, it was this exchange no that perhaps riled the cult's hierarchy. As we left their auditorium in two cars, brethren goons latched on, following, stalking, intimidating us all the way to the city, tailgating, dogging our every move. For a sect priding itself on Christian behaviour, this was anything but. After a 15 kilometre chase, we needed police help. We pulled up at City Central Police Station. The brethren took off, but they didn't go far. Across town, our cameraman fared worse. Alone, he was tailed by four brethren in two cars. Mitch in the black four-wheel drive, the brethren centimetres away. Their second car, a black Subaru, lying in wait. With a sharp U-turn, Mitch tried to escape, but was cut off. At City Central, police took our story very seriously. Armed with licence plate details, they scoured the streets for our pursuers. By now, Mitch had hatched a plan to take refuge in Channel 7's secure car park, picking up a security guard who opened the gate, jumping out to prevent the brethren following. After a 15 kilometre chase, Mitch was safe. At City Central though, we were not out of the woods. With one suspect in custody and the other missing, we thought it was safe to leave. Wrong. Yet more brethren were casing the police station. Police quick to make more arrests. This is practising radiologist and brethren doctor Mark Craddock. He prescribed the drug Cipristat to Craig Hoyle. Powerful pills used to treat prostate cancer and in some countries used as a chemical knife on sexual deviates. Whilst on Cipristat, patients are left impotent. You prescribe Cipristat to a healthy young 18-year-old male who's uh, not uh, a sex his, offender. He's uh, uh, not. Uh, it's at his own request. He's not a sex offender. No, I know he doesn't have prostate cancer. I know he, he doesn't. He didn't have to take it. He Why would you it. prescribe this for a healthy young man? Well, he wanted. He wanted. He wanted to be help. Be help with his problem. What's his I'm problem, I'm sorry. I, I cannot speak to you further. He was essentially treating a patient for homosexuality. Um, it's been struck off the list of mental illnesses. So, I mean, you know, it's. It's as absurd as treating me for being left-handed. He wanted some help, and that was the only way I could offer help. This is what you call help? Giving drugs to a, to a young man who's not ill? He asked for some help. What are the side effects of these drugs? Blood clots? Depression? Anxiety? I can't go into all this. Why Craig not? insists he saw Dr Craddock on the advice of church elders, a claim the sect denies. The brethren stating this was a private matter between doctor and patient and that the church neither condones nor excuses chemical castration. The church can deny it till they're blue in the face, but at the end of the day, someone from New Zealand who's in Australia doesn't look up the nearest radiologist and then go see them at their house. So this was a, a, a legitimate thing to do as a medical professional? Yes. Prescribe this drug for homosexuality? He wanted something. It was, he was prepared to take a trial of it. A it was, trial? It you gave right. him five repeats, a year's worth of drugs. I don't know as to the length of the... All I... right, well, here we go. There's the history. There's the prescription. Five repeats. 
Yes, well, he, he was not, wasn't obliged to take it. You recommended he took it, though? If he wanted to, if he wanted to. We say, his, it's his matter. He came to see me voluntarily. Doctor, excuse me for saying I'm this, but I don't know of any other medical practitioner that would recommend this. They see us as dirty, defiling, evil. Australia, um, proportional to our population, is probably one of the biggest uh, exclusive brethren strongholds in the world. Uh, there's 15,000 members here um, and only 40,000 worldwide. Author Michael Bachelard has spent years investigating the Brethren. I felt that this was a sect that was crying out for some public exposure. And I felt that there were a lot of politicians who were being lobbied by these people who really didn't know who they were or, or where they came from or what they thought. Uh, and, and so I wrote the book to educate people uh, about the reality of this sect, its history, and what it does to people. Sometimes I wake up at night and imagine I'm in there and I, you know, it's, it's, it's a feeling that just doesn't go away. When we got out, my father had, had two single sisters, my aunts, who we were very close to. And when we left the Brethren, I never saw them again. He never saw them again. 40 years after leaving the sect, Peter Flynn still has nightmares. A long-time member of the Country Fire Authority, he's enjoyed a happy, productive Christian life, but saw red when he discovered this Brethren-produced book about Black Saturday, a fundraiser for the CFA. The first thing that I noticed when I opened that book was a full-page endorsement by the Prime Minister Kevin Rudd. Uh, this was the same man who said when he was opposition leader that he believed the exclusive Brethren were an extremist cult and that they break up families. And here he is endorsing what they're doing. Uh, the Australian government um, has decided to uh, launch a national health and hospitals network. With the Prime Minister busy spruiking national health reform, his office told us that by appearing in the Firestorm book, Mr Rudd is in no way seeking to endorse or promote the Brethren. But it's a curious alliance with a sect that bans its flock from voting. Its interest in politics becoming evident in 2004, when the Brethren donated more than $300,000 to Mr Howard's advertising budget. And to put that in context, that was more than the Wilderness Society spent, uh, it was more than pretty much any other third party uh, spent in that election campaign. The Brethren has already presented the CFA with a $200,000 cheque. Peter insists there are ulterior motives. Does it have anything to do with them trying to improve their public image so that they can get approval for uh, building more of their halls? There is always an agenda. Do you think true Christians would really wish to broadcast this kind of generosity? You know, I can, I can think of one scripture which uh, has words to the effect that when you, um, when you do good to people, you do it quietly. There's an old saying that says charity begins at home. I think there's a lot more that they could do to repair the dreadful damage that's been done to families. You lose your family and your friends, basically every aspect of your life. At age 20, Craig Hoyle is intelligent, mature and deeply scarred. The price he's paid for coming out, unimaginable. I came home from work on a Friday afternoon and told my brothers and sisters that I was gay and that night my brothers and sisters got taken out of the house and sent to stay with other people within the church. Craig was cut off from everything and everyone he'd ever known. Excommunicated from the church, he lost his parents, six siblings, his home, his friends, his job. The really weird thing is knowing that a lot of my, you know, people that I used to know really well are in there. And here am I. But hell hath no fury like brethren scorned. While outside the Ermington Hall, Craig's father Graham rang from New Zealand, desperate to protect the church. So I'm playing into the hands of the devil and doing the devil's work. All I'm doing is telling the truth. To show exactly what it's like, you say this is a church that is about love and compassion and forgiveness. You turn up here, these eight foot high metal fences with barbed wire around the top, security guards and an intercom system. The pain goes to a point where you zone out and you just go numb. I don't hold that against him because he's just as much a victim as anyone else is. 
I really, really like I, I really, you explain this? I can't, I can't go into it further. It's... Why not? He's right here. He gives his permission, Just doctor. as a question, as being helped with a problem, what was the problem? I'd like you to say what it was. Well, you... You, you came to me voluntarily. Other than the immediate short-term side effect of loss of libido, it can make you, and it did make me, you know, tired and headachy, slightly nauseous. Telling his story is not about revenge. For Craig, it's about telling the truth, about telling Brethren members there is happiness to be found on the outside. I have no regrets about my life. I still hold a lot of my beliefs. And I think it's also a statement that says, you know, you, they have no control over my life anymore. You simply cannot preach a doctrine of hatred and profess to be a loving system. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to think to yourself, well, something's not quite right here. It's Jackie Quist reporting, and for more information and the exclusive Brethren statement in full, you can go to our website, yahoo7.com.au slash today tonight. We'll be right back. Next, breaking the speed barriers. Australia's worst speedsters with no regard for the road rules. And... I really got upset. And I don't get visibly shaken by red carpet moments. Oscars frock shocks and class acts. The fashion winners and losers. 